Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this session. And I would like to thank the conference uh, organizers for inviting me to speak on new HIV prevention methods for women. I have no conflict of interest to di disclose. This is my presentation outline. But before I go on to my presentation, I will start by looking back at the interest conference of May 2016. The underpinning theme of the 2016 interest conference held in May of 2016 was ending AIDS as a public health threat by 2030 in line with the worldwide goal set by the United Nations in 2016. The use of both antiretroviral therapy as treatment for patients with HIV infection and as pre-exposure prophylaxis for those at risk uh, for getting HIV has become the major combination approach for slowing the spread of HIV in populations and countries hardest hit by the virus. Despite the availability of highly effective strategies for the prevention of HIV, the number of new HIV infections worldwide remains unacceptably high. The current oral PrEP regimen has got some limitations, primarily because of suboptimal uptake and adherence challenges amongst at-risk persons. And the main reasons cited for low uptake or discontinuation or poor adherence have been side effects, some regimen, stigma, and pill size. So we need to develop a safe and effective and acceptable product that can be successfully used to reduce HIV transmission. So there's need for discrete products that users can control and use on their own terms. In the next five years, we anticipate that a variety of options for both PrEP and multipurpose prevention technologies will be available. And these will form a method mix better, uh, better tailored uh, for prevention options to meet each person's individual needs. We know that women particularly, they need multiple prevention options that make sense for their lives throughout the entire reproductive lifespan. They need on-demand daily, monthly, or even longer uh, options, non-systemic and systemic options. So in an effort to increase um, or to expand rather the PrEP method mix, the Dapivrin vaginal ring is in the registration process in multiple countries. So what is the Dapivrin vaginal ring? This is a small flexible silicon ring, which was developed by the International Partnership for Microbicides, and it slowly releases Dapivrin ring over a period of time. This is the first ever long acting woman initiated HIV prevention method. So a review and analysis of the Dapivrin vaginal ring uh, trials has demonstrated that the ring is effective in reducing the risk of acquiring HIV, it is safe. Yes, and also two open label extension studies showed that there's increased efficacy, there's increased adherence and increased retention in open label extension trials compared to the randomized clinical trials. The ring acts locally, so a systemic absorption is low and toxicity is also less when the ring is used. And research has shown that the values and preferences uh, and values and user preferences indicate the ring is highly acceptable. So this slide summarizing, uh, summarizes the overarching regulatory pa uh, pathways for ring approval. Of note is that the ring received a WHO pre-qualification in November. November 2020, which shows that the ring meets global standards for quality, safety, and efficacy. And this will help countries in terms of uh, decision once the ring is registered in, the, in many countries. I'm happy to mention that Zimbabwe was the first country to register the ring. This slide shows the next generation intravaginal rings, extended duration rings, multipurpose rings, 
And also this slide shows tenofovir based and tenofovir levonorgestrel based um, rings, which are uh, currently being assessed for use as MPTs. So um, the ring prevention methods with even modest efficacy, they can have a meaningful impact as part of a comprehensive strategy that could avert millions of HIV infections over time. So the ring really would prevent infections among women that would otherwise not be averted by any other method. So the ring, yes, has favorable safety profiles and offers protection against HIV. This chart really, uh, it provides a comparative overview of current and future PrEP methods, including long-acting injectable carbotegravir. Not shown on this chart is Islatravia, FTAF, and Lenacapavir, which I'll talk about. But as we continue looking at filling the gap, we must not only consider the product, but we need to look at the frequency at the site of action and the role of male partner in its use. So coming to long acting injectable carbotegravir, in 2020, um, two studies, HPTN 083 and HPTN 084, demonstrated that long acting cab injectable is superior to daily oral provider for HIV PrEP. There was a 66% reduction and an 88% reduction in HIV incidence in HPTN 083 and HPTN 084 effective uh, respectively. So both oral PrEP and CAB long acting were safe and effective in these two trials. Already under um, under consideration is a dual prevention pill, which is a co-formulated single tablet of oral PrEP with combined oral contraceptive pill. There's a, a coalition, uh, the DPP project, which is looking at the dual prevention pill, and it's mainly working in Kenya, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. At the bottom of my slide, you can see the timeline, the anticipated timelines of the DPP. Here, I've just uh, summarized some client perspectives, our preliminary insights from the DPP acceptability studies that we conducted in South Africa and Zimbabwe. We can see that um, the end users see the DPP as empowering adolescent girls and young women, and also it's less burdensome taking uh, taking two pills and results in fewer clinic visits. But we as researchers and as product developers, we must look at the disadvantages listed here and we must address them if the DPP is going to be successful. Coming to small molecules, Islatravia is a first in-class nucleoside reverse transcriptase translocation inhibitor with multiple mechanisms of action. And this could be a transformative PrEP product with many advantages. It's highly potent. It has a high barrier to resistance and it is unlikely to be a victim or a perpetrator of drug-drug interactions. Uh, to the left of my, of my slide, you can see the study design of Empower 022, which is a study which is assessing the use of uh, long acting monthly oral Islatravia compared to Truvada. And this is being spearheaded by MSD with US and Sub Saharan African partners. Another interesting molecule is FTAF, which is more potent than Trufat TDF in HIV treatment studies. And TAF has demonstrated higher antiviral activity in target tissues and there's less toxicity in many, many tissues, especially kidney and bone as compared to TDF. Another small molecule is Lena Kapavir, which is a potential first in class small molecule HIV capsid inhibitor, which has exceptional potency against HIV-2 and all major HIV-1 subtypes. 
Gilead is a spearheading the women's HIV prevention study, which is evaluating the use of long-acting lenacapavir given subcutaneously every six months. Um, and it is also looking at Discovy and Truvada for PrEP. The M studies showed that uh, a broadly neutralizing antibody can prevent HIV. We now know that VRCO1 administered at eight weekly intervals over 20 months reduces acquisition of HIV to strains that are sensitive to VRCO1. From the AM studies, we also learned that some of the characteristics of an antibody which are required to provide lasting prevention. And we also um, learned of a neutralizing tests that can help predict an antibody's ability to prevent HIV. But like antiretroviral therapy, we know that combinations of monoclonal antibodies may reduce the likelihood of viral escape and increase neutralization breadth. So to the right of my slide, you can see that combining broadly neutralizing antibodies broaden neutralization. So a lot of work already has started on broadly neutralizing antibody combinations, as well as the use of tri-specific broadly neutralization antibodies. So the years ahead in HIV prevention research are highly, highly exciting. As you can see on this slide, uh, there are many products uh, which are being shown and we can see the time to market. When do we anticipate that they will be available to an African woman like me? So this shows the vaginal ring, long acting injectables, the DPP and oral prep that I've already talked about. So in summary, we know that daily regimen for HIV prevention remains a huge barrier to adherence. And these novel products are a potential game changer and may result in ex expansion of HIV prevention package for cisgender women in Africa and globally. But adherence still matters. Access is critical. We need safety data in special populations. And it is all about choice and options. For us to achieve this, we need a supportive organizational and policy environment to allow rigorous and timely scale up of delivery interventions that work. So my presentation would be complete without discussing the impact of COVID-19 on HIV prevention. Yes, the impact on COVID-19 has been very significant on the fight against HIV. Though the number of HIV infected people receiving antiretroviral therapy has continued to decrease, the declines in prevention services are alarming if we compare to 2019. So these disruptions are resulting from COVID-19, they have resulted in the people at greatest risk of HIV infection having less access to the information and the tools they need to protect themselves. And if this continues, after so many years of hard fought gain, it would really, really be a tragedy to see the new HIV infections on the rise again. On this note, I would like to thank you for listening. And I, on behalf of the University of Zimbabwe Clinical Trials Research Center, would really like to acknowledge or fondly remember Professor James Hakim, who passed on on uh, 29th of January, 2021, due to COVID-19 related complications. May his soul rest in eternal peace. <laughs>